بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد رضا يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك رضيت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا Brothers and sisters in Islam, thank you for joining us in um, another episode where we'll be looking at some of the ways that we can potentially soften our heart in this month of Ramadan. Uh, it's very saddening because we have um, two more days to go and the month of Ramadan would come to an end and all of these mercies and blessings that you and I have experienced in this um, in these days w would be lifted and we don't know if we would live to see another another day um, another month of Ramadan you and I would go through live with what we've learned in this month of Ramadan and again we should consider this month as m more like a boot camp like a training ground and we have the next 11 month to start us to, to continue in this same way that we've demonstrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we love him, that we hope in his mercy, and we fear his um, His punishment. And you and I should continue in that way, constantly observing our salah, reciting the Quran, having a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with whatever we see fit, with that's better, that's better and easier for us. And we ask Allah to accept all of our deeds, inshallah. Uh, today's... Um, advice or recommendation for ways that we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's a path that whenever we think about it, it helps us to soften our heart. It's in the tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived life and he was not a rich man, right? On, on certain occasions or during some time in his life, he had some wealth but those wealth were not for himself, rather they were for the Ummah. So even if they had spoils of war or war booties, he didn't keep them for himself. Rather, he ensured that the Ummah got those spoils of war. And in another narration, it says that the Prophet did kind of live his life as a simple man, um, not really knowing what he would, him and his family would eat the next day, right? And in many of us today, we have billions of dollars in the account or thousands or hundreds of dollars in the account and we still didn't, don't feel happy we still feel sad we still go through some mental challenges all right it, it just goes to show that um the what we're running after the material gains that you and i are chasing after would not bring us that love and that happiness and that tranquility that we seek we can only get it by submitting to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in what we're trying to get to today is the advice of the Prophet wasallam as regards our life in general. As regards our life in general, right? It's we would either be in one of two situations. Either we're happy and we're comfortable and we feel tranquility, or we're distressed and we're going to challenges in life. All right, one of two situations, all right? And the Prophet wasallam advised us, and this, his advice is profound, right? His advice is profound. And the Prophet wasallam said in his advice, and again, we're titling this episode as, It's All Good. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. It's All Good. The reason why we title it that it's all good is because the Prophet Sallallahu started by saying Ajaba li amril mu'min That the situation, the condition of a true believer is always surprising Ajaba li amril mu'min The condition of a believer, it's always, it's, it's breathtaking Just by looking at a believer and looking at how they, they live their life You'll be surprised, you'll be amused by it. The Prophet Sallallahu says, In the Amro in all of their situations that they fall in, it's always good for them. All the situations of a believer is always good for a believer. Now we, we should start we should step back a little bit. 
how is all of this situation always good? You and I have gone through situations in life where we had to cry, where we felt pain, where, you know, many things that happened to us. And other times where we're happy, we won an award or we got a promotion at a job or we, we passed one level and went to the next level. We took a course and we passed or passed a certification. We got married or we bought a new car. Whatever the situation is, we're happy in some cases in life and other cases we were not truly happy, right? But the Prophet Sallallahu is telling us here, he says, It is surprising the case and the situation of a believer. All, not some, all of the conditions or situation that a believer would fall in in life, it's always good for them. All of them, it's always good for them. And this is not for anyone else except a believer. Now, he didn't say a Muslim. The Prophet did not say a Muslim. He says a mu'min. And this type of description that the Prophet wants to give us is not for the general public. It's not for other people up there. It's based upon those that are truly believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only for the believers. Now he goes to explain both the both condition. The Prophet wasallam says, In asobatu sarra shakara fakana khayrullah. Allahu Akbar. In asobatu sharra shakara fakana khayrullah. If they have been if they're expressing ease, they're expressing goodness, they're expressing things that brings joy to their heart, shakara, guess what? Shakar, they become grateful. They show gratitude. They know that all of that came from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fakana khayrullah. And because they're grateful, it's better for them. Meaning, there is a reward for them when they show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet continues, in However, if something difficult, had they, if they've been afflicted with something difficult, something that's challenging for them, something that's more like a burden that they, that they feel or think that they cannot handle, sabr, and then with that, they are patient, فَكَانَ خَيْرُ Again, it becomes better for them. It becomes a reward for them. So what the Prophet Sallallahu is telling you and I is that whatever we go through, be it good or bad, what we consider to be good or what we consider to be bad, and however it makes us feel, we feel happy about it or we do not feel happy about it and we feel sad, guess what? If we have the mindset of a true believer, then every of our condition will be better for us. If we have the mindset of a person that had not just submitted to Allah, they also believe that whatever happens to them is by their permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person stands a chance to always get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us two conditions. Either we have been, uh, either we're going through a situation where we like what's happening to us, or we're going through a situation where we don't like what's going on, going on with us, right? So if we like what's going on with us, in asabatu sarra, if we like what's going on with us, shakara fakana khayrullah. We should demonstrate the, the attribute of showing gratitude. And if we do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it better for us by rewarding us. However, if we're going through difficult times, you and I should be patient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would use that patient as a means of rewarding us and blessing us in multiple fold. Again, whenever the Prophet Sallallahu speaks, there's, you, we, we would always see the traces of that in the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an and the Prophet, they're inseparable, right? The Prophet 
وسلم, was an actual working Quran. He lived his life explaining the Quran. When Aisha was asked about the Prophet, he said he is the Quran. He basically acted out the Quran. So it's not it does not make sense for a person to try to separate the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet. That's not gonna work. It's like trying to separate the heart and the body. It's not gonna work. Right? The person would die if we do that. So in the in the Quran, in Surah to Ibrahim, a very beautiful surah, Surah to Ibrahim is Surah 14 of the Quran, verse 7. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَإِذْ أَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَئِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَئِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ibrahim, Surah 14, verse 7, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَئِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And remember, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proclaimed, that la in shakartum la azi dannakum when you show gratitude Allah would for surely increase you so whatever Allah gives you and you show gratitude guess what he's going to increase you in it you see that it confirms with what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling us in asabatuhu sarra shakara fa kana khairul meaning if they go through situations in life where they are happy with what's happening and they show gratitude. Guess what? Allah would make it better for them by rewarding them. Allah now tells us in Surah Al-Ibrahim that shakartum, If you show gratitude, and again, many of us, we show gratitude when we're happy. We say, Alhamdulillah, right? When we're happy or when the situation is conducive for us, when we like what's happening, right? Allah then says, لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you show gratitude, I would increase you. That is the that is translating the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he says, فَكَانَ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ It's going to be better for you and I when we show gratitude. Allah tells us that He's going to increase us. He's going to increase us. وَلَئِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِينَ However, if we disobey or we deny the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should know that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's severe. And no one wants to go through that type of punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a lot of opportunities for you and I to turn towards Him in showing gratitude or in demonstrating the attribute of being patient. Depending on what's going on in our lives, you and I would have to um, be patient or show gratitude. Another example of showing gratitude is captured in the Quran, the story of Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. Um, you and I are aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a lot of things. He gave him dominion on earth to the extent where he could control the jinns, all right? And he could he, he could also hear the conversation of birds. That's what he says in the Quran. That we were given the ability to understand the language of the birds. That That's from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ants too. When the ants claimed that you know, they should get out, they, 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 they proclaim that they should get out of the road because if they don't go out of the road or come off from the road, the troops of Sulaiman might trample over them and they would not even know it. Allah blessed Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam to be able to hear that conversation or that announcement that one ant made to the rest of the colony. Guess what happened? Prophet Sulaiman did not sit there and act like, oh, I'm the whole royal king, I'm the one that has all these powers. No. He thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing that Allah had given him. So we see that Prophet Sulaiman and his father, Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, both of them were people that showed gratitude. And Allah blessed them on earth, gave them dominion on earth. And they showed gratitude and they were not arrogant they did not deny the blessings and the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
So when you and I are being blessed, when you and I go through situations in life where we're, ha we're, we're happy, we're glad, we like what's going on with us, and we're not being disobedient by trying to believe to all of the blessings that Allah has given us, then you and I should start reward. You and I should start praising Allah by showing gratitude. And if we do that, Allah says, La azidanakum, that He's going to increase us. In Surah Tun Nisa, that's Surah 4 of the Quran, verse 147, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ma yef Allah ubi adabikum in shakarutum wa amentum, wa can Allah hu shakiran alima. Wa can Allah. Allah tells us What would Allah do Or what would Allah benefit By punishing us If we already show gratitude And we believe in him Again If we believe in Allah And we show gratitude Why should he punish us why should he punish? There's no need for him to punish us because we believe and we show gratitude for his mercies that he's blessed us with. It's common sense. It's not rocket science. مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرُتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What would Allah benefit? What would Allah do with punishing us if we were true believers, sincere, and we're sincere with our worship, and we show gratitude for the blessings, for the ni'mah that he has blessed us with. And we should remember, فَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاقِرًا عَلِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is everly appreciative and he is an all-knowing God. So if you and I understand that our Creator is an appreciative God, whatever we do, if we show gratitude, he's going to appreciate it. He's going to appreciate it. And Ali, man, he knows what we're going through. What we're going through of good or what you and I consider to be something that's difficult. Allah tells us that he does not put upon us a burden that we cannot bear. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اقتسبت so Allah would not put upon us, you and I, a burden that we cannot bear. Sometimes we might go through challenges in life and we don't like it. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands that he has a, the, He knows the wisdom behind it. And he understands that if, if we can only be patient, if we can only be patient, then we'll stand in chance to receive um, the best type of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's talking about being shown gratitude. Then we're talking about patience. The last verse, the last verse of Surah Al Imran, Surah 2 of the Quran, verse 200, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally explains that. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayu alladhina amanu isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa taqullah la'alakum tuflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who truly believe, isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. Again, be patient, demonstrate patience, show, show patience, also encourage others to be patient. Allah and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why should you be patient and fear Allah? Allah says, La alaikum tuflihun, so that you can become successful. That success is Al Jannah. So when we're patient upon what we consider to be difficult upon us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses, uses that as an opportunity to make us eligible for his mercy to be granted al-jannah. So whatever our condition is, if we're happy and we like what's happening to us, we should show gratitude because it's going to be better for us. And if we don't like our current condition and things are difficult, again, in this situation, we have to be patient and rely solely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we do that, it's going to be better for us because we stand a chance to become among those that are successful that will gain al Jannah. All for the believers, according to the Prophet sallallahu the condition of the believer, it's always better for them. So whatever happens to you and I, we should strive to get to that point where we're either grateful because we're happy with what's going on or we're patient because we might not like what's going on. And whatever happens... If we take this formula and we implement it, 
then we will be receiving reward come what may. It does not matter if it's raining. It does not matter if it's sunny. It does not matter if the snow is coming down. It does not matter if it's hail. Whatever the season is, we stand in chance to constantly rip, 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 you know, roll in reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to leave us here, inshallah. And um, inshallah, on Wednesday, the next two days, we will be reviewing um, ma many of the uh, options that we talked about, many of the recommendations we provided in this series when we looked at how we can soften our heart in this month of Ramadan, I, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us all, our, all, of, all of our act of ibadah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free us from hell and count us among the inheritors of paradise. And I ask him as the only creator worthy to be worshipped to guide us to the right path and make all of our offspring and family members and generations to come stay upon the truth and demonstrate the truth and live a life of righteousness. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. وفي الآخرة حسن وقنا ذب النار ربنا إن نسألك الجنة الفردوس مع رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحانك رب العزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين